All right, welcome back to our study in uh, Colossians 3. Today we're uh, doing the conclusion of this week's study of Put On The New. And we put off the old last week, put on the new, we're going to put on some more next week. But uh, we're going to end here for this week. And, uh, you know, putting on the new self requires some things. It requires putting on a new name. You have a new name, God's holy, beloved, chosen one. It requires new qualities like love that binds all things together, like compassionate hearts and kindness and, and meekness and patience and all those things. Binds it all, Love binds it all together. You have to put on love. Then you have to have a new mindset. you got to allow the peace of Christ to rule your heart, rule your mind, rule your emotions. You have to allow yourself to be thankful all the time. So be thankful for the little things, big, be thankful for the big things, be thankful for anything. Anything you have can be thank, a source of thankfulness. So there are two more new things that the new self requires. We'll put those, uh, which are new authority and new goals, but we'll look at those uh, next week. Hopefully you've noticed that the new self impacts the way that we treat one another in the church. It has to. Uh, Commentator Stark said that the wolf devours the lamb is nothing uncommon, but that one lamb eats another is deplorable and unnatural. We who are Christ's sheep will cherish love toward one another. That's what we do. The sheep should not be biting and eating each other. That's gross. That's unnatural. All right? The wolves coming in, eating us, that's one thing. But the sheep should not be doing that. The Christian life and action should be characterized as love toward one another. If we look at our actions throughout the day, do we say, I love the church? Does it have anything to do with the church? Because if they don't have anything to do with the church, then that's a problem in itself. We need to change our mindset so that we're now thinking about the church more and more and more and the people of the church, not just the activities of the church. Not, not I'm not talking about activities, not talking about programs, and not talking about what the church should do or not do. I'm talking about the people of the church and what they're doing and how they're feeling. Do we say, I love the church? Do they say, I love God's people? If they don't, are we sure that we love God? John said, we know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever, love, whoever does not love abides in death. So you must put on love every day like you put on your pair of pants, right? Don't leave home undressed. Put on the, the, the clothes of God that he's given to you. Put on love. But you need to put that on first. Put God's love on first. You might put on a shirt, but if you don't have any pants or underwear on, you're still undressed, right? You're not going not gonna to go well once you go out the door. So put on everything. Don't forget peace. And thankfulness, along with love, they are necessary items for the Christian follower. Make certain that your peace is the peace of Christ. One commentator compared worldly peace to a volcano that is spending its time gathering up its energy for a giant explosion. Right? That's not how we should do it. The peace of Christ is to be our constant rule, our constant referee that calls fouls and points to our errors and helps us to correct them before we're disqualified. How thankful we should be for this peace. It is the peace that keeps us together. It is this peace that allows us to be together as a church. That's it. If you don't keep that peace, you will break the peace. Then you're working against the peace. Either you have the peace or you're working against the peace. There's, there's only two options, right? And if you're going against the peace, eventually either you will destroy the church or you will leave the church. But you're breaking the peace. If you're keeping the peace and everyone's keeping the peace, everyone's loving the peace of Christ and letting it rule in their hearts, the church will will be strong. It'll be spiritually strong. That's just how it is. It's the peace that allows us to be together. Finally, remember who you are. Why do we go through all the trouble putting these things on? Why do this? Because you have a new self. You're chosen of God. You are holy. You are beloved. If you are tempted to put not to put to death what is earthly in you and to leave the new robes of the new self at home, remember who you are. You are not the old, vile, dirty self anymore. You are chosen, holy, and beloved of God. Remember that. And if you feel dirty, if you feel like you're failing all the time, remember who you are. You are a new self. 
You are not the old. Now you just need to put these things on. Just it's interesting because it says put them on, right? It, there's not a bunch of like, oh, you need to do this, this, and this. You gotta, you gotta do all these hard things in order. It, 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 Paul paints it in such an easy way. Just, just put off the old, put on the on, put on the new. That's it. Almost like you're just putting on some new clothes. So that makes it sound so easy, right? And in reality, it is. We're the ones that make it hard. We just obey and said, yep, I'll just do what he says. We got our emotions under control instead of allowing them to control us. It would be a lot easier. And that's a lot of our problem. So, But that's the end of our study this week. This one is challenging. This one's hard because I make it hard myself. I need to do better. And so I need to put on the new better too. But uh, that's why we have the church, to help each other, encourage each other. So that's what we need to be doing every day, uh, every every week. Till the Lord returns or he calls us home. So get into church. Get in a good church and then commit to love these people no matter what. You know, die with these people. Die in that church. Don't keep jumping around. Even if you've been there for a long time and you have struggles, struggle with them. Bear with them. Bear up underneath that. And you will only be better for it. If you run, you cut and run, you're short-circuiting what the Holy Spirit's trying to do to you. He's trying to help you out. He's trying to make you more like Christ. And you're saying no. So don't do that. You know, embrace it. Be patient. Be humble. Put on love. Put on all these things. And follow Christ. Sounds simple, right? Uh, but we know it's a struggle. We know it is. I know it is. I struggle. So that's why, like I said, we have each other. So build each other up this week. So that's the end of this week. Come back next time. We'll look on putting on more. We got two more things, like I said, and we'll cover those next time. <laughs>